ഫിദ്ദീൻ رب زدني علما اللهم الهمنا رشدا وعزنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Today we will continue with the discussion of verse 36 Surah An-Nisa Wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bihi shay'an wa bil walidayni ihsanan wa bi dhil qurba wal yatama wal masakini wa jari dhil qurba wal jari al junubi wa sahib bil jambi wa bin sabili wa ma malakat aymanukum ان الله لا يحب من كان محتالا فخورا الله says worship allah and associate nothing with him and to parents do good and to relatives orphans the needy the near neighbors the neighbors far away the companion at your side the traveler and those whom your right hands possess Indeed Allah does not like those who are self deluding and boastful Talking about this verse 36 we have already in our previous two sessions talked about the rights of the parents the rights of the relations of kin the orphans the needy and the deprived of the society Today we will be talking about the rights of the near neighbors the neighbors far away the companions at our sides and the those whom our rights right hands possess Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal jari dhil qurba wal jari al junubi jar means the neighbor neighbors are the people whose house is close or adjacent to our houses and it is only when we read the message of quran and the orders of quran and the message of hadith then only it is that we realize that how colossal are the rights of the neighbors on all of us usually we we, we just don't know we just don't realize and you know what hearing and learning is actually believing so now from here onwards i shall be narrating a few ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make it clear for ourselves that what is the right of a muslim what are, what is the right of a neighbor for all of us Hazrat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha and Hazrat Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu they both report in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Jibreel counseled me so persistently about the rights of the neighbors that I felt that he was going to declare them as an heir so there you are Allah is announcing their rights in surah tunisa and hazrat jibril is bringing a revelation to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam highlighting him about the rights of the neighbors prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a sahih hadith the words are that if your neighbor says you are good you are good and if your neighbor says you are bad then you are bad so what we are like it just depends what opinion our neighbors have about us our ethics our mannerism our conducts our dealings all that depends on what our neighbors think 
or what opinion they have about us. Hazrat Jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in a sahih hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that neighbors are of three types. Here in Surah An-Nisa we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned two types of neighbors. This is according to the distance. Wal jar al junubi these are the neighbors way which are very close to us and the wal jar dil qurba and the neighbors who are related to us and the neighbors who are far off from us so the two types of neighbors are being mentioned are uh, being mentioned here and in hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that there are three types of neighbors the first type of neighbor is a non muslim neighbor and he has just one right because of his being a neighbor or because of his neighborhood the second type of neighbor is a muslim neighbor and he has two rights one because of him being a muslim brother and the other is because of him being a neighbor and the third type of the neighbor has three rights and this is a neighbor who is a muslim and a relative neighbor so his three rights are number 1 because of him being being a muslim brother secondly because of being a neighbor and the third right is being is because of being a relative so he has three relative uh, three uh, rights over the neighbor now prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith reported by hazrat abdul rahman ibn abu qarud prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if anyone desires if anyone desires to love allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or rather he wants to have allah and his messenger love him then he should do what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said he has instructed three things that if you want to love allah and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or you want that they love you then what should you do he should speak the truth when he tells anything second fulfills his trust when he is put in a position of trust and third be a good neighbor so if we want to be in the list of the people who are the beloveds of the allah and of his prophet then we need to be truthful and honest then we need to be trustworthy and we need to be nice and kind to our neighbors Similarly in another hadith reported by Hazrat Abu Shurayh in Bukhari and Muslim Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever believes in Allah and the day of final judgment alhamdulillah we are all among these people whoever believes in Allah and the day of final judgment it is essential for him to be kind and gentle to his neighbors and then he said whoever believes in allah and the day of final judgment it is essential for him to entertain his guests with kindness and generosity and whoever believes in allah and the day of final judgment it is essential for him to speak what is good or keep quiet so this is a matter of belief that if we claim and if we declare that we are a believer we are essentially supposed to be good to nice and courteous to our guests to our neighbors similarly in a hadith reported by hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in both muslim and bukhari prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he was he was sitting uh, in his companions and he said wallahu la yu'min wallahu la yu'min wallahu la yu'min by allah he is not a true believer by allah there is no faith in him by allah he is not a believing man so when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying that the companions asked kila man ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who are you talking about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allazi la yaqmanu jarahu bi baiqahu from whose mischief his neighbors do not feel secure 
So a person, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has announced will not be a believer, will not be a Mormon, will not be a Muslim until and unless he stops being mischievous with his neighbors. So if our, if anybody reciting the Kalima is still mischievous with his neighbors and, her mis and the person's neighbors are upset because of him or he is teasing or he is irritating his neighbors then by the words of the Prophet وسلم, he is not a true believer so behavior and mannerism with the neighbors is needed to perfect our belief and faith also Hazrat Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports, uh, reports in, a, in a Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la yadkulul jannata that person should not enter into the paradise or heaven la yadkulul jannata man la ya manujarahu biwaiqahu he shall not enter the paradise from whose mischief his neighbors do not feel secure so our dealings with neighbors will determine whether we are a believer or a non-believer and whether we will enter the paradise or will not be allowed to enter the paradise. Prophet Sallallahu in another hadith reported by Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Tabrani, he said, he has not affirmed faith in me. The Prophet ﷺ is saying that the person will not affirm his faith in me. That is, he will not be my follower who, who eats to his satisfaction and sleeps comfortably in the night while his neighbor goes hungry and he's aware of it. So being, so being aware of the condition of the neighbors and then helping them, supporting them, caring for them is what is going to help us complete and fulfill our faith. And there is a very lengthy hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is reported by Hazrat Muawiyah bin Haida radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Tabrani. And I always say that this these words of the Prophet ﷺ are actually going to teach us the charter of the rights of the neighbors. Prophet ﷺ said that the rights of the neighbors upon you are that if he asks for help, then help him. If he asks for a loan, then lend him. If he commits an evil deed, you prevent it from being known. That is, you don't make it public and you cover up his evil deed. If he is favored by luck, you felicitate him. If a calamity befalls him, then you grieve in sympathy with him. If he falls ill or if he falls sick, you visit him. If he dies, you attend his funeral. That is, you take part in the arrangements of the funeral and the burial and everything. And and you desist from erecting your building higher than his. You desist from erecting your building higher than his in a way that fresh air and light cannot have a free passage to his house. And when you prepare delicious food in your house, you take care that the aroma of your dish does not cause sorrow to him or his children, except that you send some of it to him as a guest. And then there have been additions in the hadith in the same, uh, in the words by Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As that the Prophet ﷺ said that if you buy fruit, some seasonal fruits if you buy, send some of it to your neighbors as a gift. And if it may not be possible, you see, sometimes we might not be affording a lot. And sometimes the, the fruit we brought is, as it is, it is not enough for the family. So when it, you cannot do it. So bring in it secretly so that the neighbor does not know about it. And also be careful that none of your children takes the fruit out of the house and eats it in their prison, lest the neighbor's child feels envious on seeing it. Just imagine, we are even supposed to look after and to be sensitive and to be caring 
about their feelings, about their desires, about their emotions, and about their state of mind. And far as far as that dish is concerned, in a hadith reported by Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the Brani, the Prophet was heard saying that when curry is cooked, that is, that when any one of you cooks curry in your house, he should increase the broth by adding water to it and send some of it to your neighbor. So, that is, in any case, supporting the neighbors in some form and the other. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was sitting and she was thinking and she was as if pondering over something and the Prophet came and he asked, what are you thinking about? Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that I have a gift and I, I can't decide that to which neighbor should I send the gift. Prophet ﷺ instructed her very clearly that the neighbor whose door is closer and adjacent to your door. So the closer the neighbor, the greater the greater the right of the neighbor as well. And then there is a very a special sermon of the Prophet ﷺ, which is reported by Hazrat Al-Kama bin Abdul Rahman radiallahu ta'ala anhu in one of his narrations in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu was saying what has happened to those whom Allah has favored with an exceptional knowledge and understanding of faith and sharia in their neighborhood in their neighborhood there, there live people who are sadly wanting in it and they don't know nothing about the way or the teachings of faith. So now, Allah is saying that there are people who are the scholars of religion and around them there are neighbors who are totally ignorant of all the teachings. They live, there are people who are sadly wanting it. And the scholars do what? They, they do nothing by the way of teaching faith to their neighbors and promoting an awareness of it in them. They neither give good counsel to them or, or discharge the duty of sanctioning what is lawful and forbidding what is prohibited. And then he said, what has happened to the uninformed and the backward and the illiterate people that they make no effort to learn about the faith from their neighbors? By Allah, it is the duty of those possessing knowledge and the understanding of faith to try to teach the faith to their ignorant and backward neighbors and to produce an awareness of it in them and to reform them through preaching and good counseling and exhort them to do what is good and legitimate and abstain from what is wrong and forbidden. In the same way, the ignorant people should acquire the knowledge and understanding of faith from their neighbors, like seekers of knowledge, and take advice from them. And then the Prophet ﷺ, in the end, he added, otherwise, that is, if the scholars don't do this, and if the ignorance don't behave like this, otherwise, I will have a severe punishment sent down upon them in this very existence. So, we learn from this hadith that the learned people of a community should, should be educating, should be teaching, should be guiding, should be advising, should be counseling the ignorance. And the ignorance of the society should be learning, receiving, believing, accepting and acting according to the information they've been given. What a lovely collaboration between the neighborhood has been established in the community by all these teachings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us learn all these teachings and may He may He make us among those who are among the people who pay the rights, due rights of their neighbors. And then after the neighbors, Allah talks about Wasahibi Bil Jambi. What do we mean by this? The companion at your side. Who is this person? And who is this referring to? By this we mean people whom we come across when we are going about in the community. For example, we are traveling in an aeroplane or we are traveling in a train. So the traveler who is sitting on the seat 
Immediately next to us is what? Wasahibi bil jamb. Companion at your side. A mother, any one of us, we go to the school to pick up our children and we're just sitting and we are waiting and another child's mother comes and sits close to us on the next seat or on the next bench. She'll be what? Wasahibi bil jamb. So you understand? But by Waswahibi Biljam, we mean what? We mean the people around us while we're going about in the society or in our community. Now, how are we supposed to behave and relate with the companions of our side? I suppose I can only make this clear by a story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu was traveling and uh, while traveling he stopped over at a point and uh, he was sitting and there were two strangers who were also traveling with him and when he sat down at the stopover the two stranger travelers they came and they sat beside him so now they were what? They were Wasahibi Biljam they came and they sat close to him the narrator says that the Prophet ﷺ had two miswaks in his hand. And the narrator explains that one of the two was the better. And in detail explains that the better one was slightly longer, it was thicker, it was straighter, it was green and it was fresh. And the other one was slightly crooked, it was short, it was thin, it was drier. So... One of them was better than the other. Now, when the travelers saw these two in Prophet Wasallam's hand, they asked for one. Before I tell you what the Prophet Wasallam said and what he did actually, I would ask all of us to think, if I had been in that position, what would I have done? Okay, now let's see what the Prophet Wasallam did. He handed over the better one to the person. The companions who were with Prophet ﷺ, they were taken back a bit. And one of them said that he's a stranger, meaning that this person who's asked for who's asked for this is a total stranger. We will be with him for some time and he'll just walk off. And we might never ever come across in our life. We don't have anything common. We have no love lost, no no relationships, no nothing, no acquaintances. He's just sitting by my side for a few minutes and then the relationship will finish. So why, why do we have to give him the better out of the two? Prophet Wasallam said, Look, even the companion by the side has a right on us. Allahu Akbar. Really? Really did we know this? Are we aware of all this? Are we conscious of all this? Are we sensitive and careful about all the rights of the people around us? Allahumma hasibna risa bi'asira. And you know what? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually did on this occasion what he has asked all of us to do. The words of a hadith reported in Bukhari tell us that the Prophet ﷺ said, None of you can be a believer until you like for your Muslim brother what you like for yourself. You cannot be a Muslim. You cannot be a Mormon. You cannot complete and perfect your faith. Until and unless you want, you desire and you like or you opt for your other Muslim brothers and sisters, what you want and opt for yourself. Would, would we all want to be cheated? Would we want to be made fun of? Would we want to be humiliated? Would we want to be called by bad names? Would we want to be abused? No. So when if we don't want all this and even much more things to ourselves. How can we do all that to our fellow beings or to our Muslims 
Muslim brothers and sisters, Allah help us, help us perfect our faith, help us and guide us to perfect our iman and help us be actual believers and Muslims and Mumins and Muminat. And then after that, Allah says, وَمَا مَلَقَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ وَمَا مَلَقَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ We mean what? أَيْمَانُكُمْ Yameen in Arabic means the right hand. Allah says in the Quran for the people of Jannah, calls them as Ashabu Yameen. These are the people of the right hand meaning that they are the people who will, who will be handed over their, their books of deed, their records of deeds in their right hand, and these will be the people of Jannah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allah make us one of them. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allah make us one of Ashabul Yameen. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allah make us one of the people of Jannah. And Malakat is from Malik. Malik is the owner. So this term, Malakat Aymanuhum, which is repeated many times in the Quran, it actually refers to the slaves in Arabic. So we mean what? Malakat Aymanuhum, we mean the slaves. Now, before explaining and going about the discussion of what the rights of the slaves have been explained in Quran and Hadith, I would want to talk a little about the concept of slavery and about the way and the method how slavery was abolished in Islam. Who are slaves according to the definition of Sharia? That is one thing is for sure that slaves are not the bought and the sold people because the selling and the buying of free people is totally forbidden in Islam. The words of a Sahih Hadith of uh, Prophet ﷺ tell us that Prophet ﷺ said that the wrath of Allah will be on three people on the day of the resurrection. That Allah will be furious, Allah will be angry on three people on the day of resurrection. Number one, one who makes a covenant in the name of Allah and then breaks it. The second, who buys or pays a price for a free man. Number three, who decides a wage or wages for a laborer and then refuses to pay when the laborer finishes his decided job. So these are the person Allah will be furious and angry on the day of the judgment. And so according to this, it is strictly forbidden to buy or sell human beings like animals. So according to the strict definition of Sharia, who were considered as slaves. Slaves, according to the definition in Sharia, were the men or the women who were the captives of the Muslim army from the battlefield when they were actually found fighting with the Muslim army in the battlefield. They were not even the peaceful, innocent citizens of the city which was conquered by the Muslim army. Like if the Muslim army conquered a city and they entered the city and they, they captured the people, then these innocent or peaceful citizens which were not fighting with the Muslim army in the battlefield cannot be taken as captives, they cannot be taken as prisoners, they cannot be made slave men or slave women according to definition in Sharia. So because of this, by the definition of Slavery has been abolished. 
in the modern world there are no slave men and there are no slave women according to the definition we cannot fulfill that requirement now and in the period of uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were slaves all around in makka in madina and uh, quran gave orders to slowly get the slaves released as far as the release of the slaves were concerned no order was given in the quran just one fine morning that all slaves be released no this was not done because if this had been done it would have had very serious repercussions in the society so many slave women and slave uh, men going about free in the society would have definitely created complications and repercussions so this was not how slavery was abolished the freeing and the releasing of slaves was done by various methods according to quran and hadith number 1 was that for various people who had committed various sins they were supposed to uh, pay as a penalty or a kafara they were supposed to release they were made to release the slaves like uh it was the penalty of a person who voluntarily knowingly ate during a uh, an obligatory fast and broke his obligatory fast similarly a person voluntarily knowingly committed or indulged in a sexual relationship during an obligatory fast so the penalty was for him one of the penalties suggested by quran was that he would have to release a slave and there were other sins as well and then secondly a huge reward was promised for the person who would free who would buy and who would free a slave like the words of a sahih hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whenever a bondsman pays to release a slave then in lieu of each part of the body of the slave the part of the body of the releaser will be released from hell fire so hearing such words the companions who were desirous of saving their skins and saving their body parts from hell fire they used to buy and they used to release slaves very frequently just like hazrat usman radhiyallahu ta'ala and who had a routine that every friday he used to set a a slave a slave free <coughs> he used to set a slave free and uh, he himself told that if on any friday he didn't uh, he couldn't afford it or he couldn't find a slave then the next friday he used to set two slaves free so now by all means actual slavery has been abolished and so the commandments for uh, malakat aimanukum which we are going to discuss here would now be basically be relating to our people who are in our service or people who are our maid servants or our men servants they will be relating to basically the servants of today prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has according to his <coughs> prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in many hadith and in the model of his sunna has very clearly instructed us the mannerism we are supposed to take with our slaves and with our servants hasat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in abu daud that the last words spoken by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his death bed before his death so this was the the last instructions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his death bed before his death were as-salatu as-salatu wattaqullaha fi ma malakat aymanukum prayers prayers that is observe your salah look after your prayers in salah and fear allah regarding your slaves and servants 
حضرت ابو حریرا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ رپورٹس ان مسلم دیٹ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ فوڈ اینڈ ڈریس از دا رائٹ آف دا سلیو اینڈ آلسو دیٹ ہی از ناٹ اسائنڈ اے ٹاسک وچ مے بی بیونڈ ہز انڈیورنس سملرلی ورڈس آر آلموسٹ دا سیم حضرت ابو ذر غفاری رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ رپورٹس ان بخاری اینڈ مسلم دیٹ دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ your poor slaves obviously they are poor they are deprived they are underprivileged they are the have nots they are those which are generally they were generally oppressed in the societies of the prophet sallallahu said your poor slaves they are your brothers allah has placed them under your authority so this has been said to make us realize remember that if we are a mistress and the other woman is our maid servant it is it is just how allah has made it it is none of our activities it is none of our performances that i happen to be the mistress and she happens to be the maid servant it is all the bounty it is all the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on me that i was born in a house of masters and she was born in a house of maids so There's nothing to be arrogant about it. There's nothing to be harsh and hard about it. So Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah has placed them under your authority. So he who has a brother under him should feed him and clothe him as he does himself and avoid taking from him work that is beyond his power. And if he does And if he does tell him so to do such a thing, then he should also join in it. How practical is our religion? And how kind and how caring and how merciful are the teachings of the Quran and the Hadith? And you see that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that we should not and we ought not put as much, as much work on him which he cannot endure or of which he doesn't have the physical strength but then there are going to be situations that we do have certain jobs which have to be done but they will be beyond the endurance of the servant or the slave and when the task has to be done the suggestion is given right away then just then just do what lend him a helping hand and give him a helping hand so that if he can't do it alone with your help it will be done and he'll be able to do it easily and you see these things which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being heard telling us and all the umma is not just what he told us to do in fact he himself was practicing them much much better level than all of us he has actually acted upon what all but he has said and what he has educated and what he has taught all of the muslims like you know when I always used to wonder that how come and why was it so that Hazrat Bilal being a black, being a Negro, being a slave, an oppressed slave, he got to be one of the pioneers, he got to be one of the sabikun to accept and embrace Islam. Why was it so? He was not educated. He was so deprived. He was subjected to all forms of oppressions. How? How did he have the time? How did he have the comprehension to come up and be one of the first persons in Mecca to accept Islam and to embrace Islam? How was it possible? I got an insight and understanding to the whole situation when I came through this incident and the behavior and the mannerism and the dealing of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Hazrat Bilal radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu Hazrat Bilal was a slave and his master was a very cruel and a very hard-hearted man and the master used to impose a lot of heavy physical work on Hazrat Bilal and he used to instruct him to do everything and then he used to tell him that 
you have such and such works to do and in this time period and when i get back to you if all these things are not done and if all the job is not done then i should beat you and i should punish you and he used to threat him and he used to scold him and he used to he used to give him big threat of all forms of hard punishments so when hazrat bilal razi allah ta'ala and who used to be doing all these jobs and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pass by he used to see this this negro slave just working hard and sweating and doing work beyond his power and beyond his endurance and slogging like anything prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to stop there and why he was a total stranger he was not his relative he was not his friend he was a total stranger and then he was a black he was a he was a slave after all why this was the soft heartedness and this was the mercy of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this was the kindness of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is the exemplary model for all of us he used to stop there he used to he used to help his bilal razi allah ta'ala and who perform all the job so that he was not punished by the master and it was just not on one single occasion prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do that very often whenever he used to pass from there he used to help his bilal razi allah ta'ala and who do all his work and then finally when this all was before the prophethood of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this mannerism and this conduct of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was before he was he was he was chosen as the prophet and then when he was chosen as the prophet and he announced and he declared his prophethood and the news got to hazrat bilal he came running and he accepted and embraced islam so remember it was it was just because of his kindness of his merciful behavior and attitude that he managed to get the slave accept islam this brotherly treatment and this lending of helping hand was actually what got him into islam and then as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that feed them what you eat and clothe them with what you wear yourself i can clearly remember the incidents of hazrat ali razi allah ta'ala anhu when he was the caliph and um, it was eid was nearing and uh, for the eid festival he had two unstitched clothes and he one of them was better than the other and he handed them over both to the slave asking him to get stitched and he suggested that the better one the slave should get a stitch for himself and the one which was like slightly poorer in quality he gets his stitch for hazrat ali razi allah ta'ala anhu and the slave refused and he said master how how come how come how can i do that that i get the better one stitch for me and the inferior one stitch for you khalifatul muslimin how can that be done hazrat ali razi allah ta'ala anhu in a very matter of fact tone because he he was aware of all these words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a very matter of fact tone he said you see actually the state of affairs is that the young and the youthful are actually more deserving of wearing the better clothes as compared to the elder people of the locality so there you are this was the justice this was the kindness this was the mercy and this is the behavior of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once they heard the narrations of the hadith may allah help us all and guide us all to react like the like the mannerism of the companions and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is instructing to feed them out of what they cook for us hazrat abu huraira razi allah ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when your slave or slave uh, or servant prepares food for you and lays it before you he has suffered the inconvenience of the heat and the smoke in cooking it so you should ask him to sit down and share the meal if the food is in a small quantity 
then the master should at least give a morsel or two of it to him so sharing for them and then in a hadith reported by Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Abu Dawood Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a person asked Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam o messenger of Allah kam nafu anil khadim how frequently and to what extent should we forgive the mistakes of our servants or our slaves the narrator says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remained silent the man asked again prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again remained silent he inquired again for the third time and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said urfu anhu qul qul yawmin sab'ina marra you forgive him every day 70 times so remember forgiving forgiving and being merciful and being kind to their servants and i would definitely want to highlight that if the servant is incompetent and he keeps on doing wrong things all the day long then rather than scolding and losing temper and shouting and yelling or abusing we might as well replace get rid of him or get rid of her and replace her or him by another person if she is not good enough and she is not up to the mark then rather scolding and shouting it is better to replace and if we cannot replace then we need to keep on forgiving at least 70 times a day hasat qab bin ujra radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in a sahih hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not punish the slave girls for breaking the utensils for the age of the utensils too is determined beforehand like your age i think for us for muslim muslim women being mistresses this is a very big eye opener and a very clear cut message hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a sahih hadith whoever beats the slave unjustly revenge will be taken from him on the day of resurrection and similarly hazrat abdullah bin umar radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared that if anyone punishes his serve his slave for a crime which he has not committed or slaps him then he cannot make an atonement by emancipating him and if he does not do this then he will be punished by Allah and hazrat abdullah bin masud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates his own event and uh, an occasion in um, muslim that he says that um, i was bleeding my slave the slave might have wronged something and hazrat abdullah bin masud says that um, i was beating my slave when i heard a voice from behind that someone was saying oh musa oh abu masud fear allah hazrat abdullah bin masud says that the person who was talking was quite far off and i couldn't really clearly make up the words so i kept on hitting the slave and then the person came near and then i heard the person saying oh abu masud remember that allah has greater power and authority over you than you have over this poor slave he said that i turned around and i saw that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was standing there and he was saying all that he said that i caught immediately i said oh messenger of allah i am setting him free now that he is free from my sake for the sake of allah then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you should know that had you not done so then what had you not set him free the fire of the hell would have consumed you the words were la fahat kan nar wa la masat kan nar the fire of the hell would have consumed you allahumma achirna min an nar allahumma achirna min an nar so this is all to educate and teach us how soft and how merciful and how kind we have to be to our servants and to our maids and hazrat anas radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in bukhari he says that i was in the service of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for full 10 years 
For full 10 years was I in the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in these 10 years Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never beat me, never did he scold me or never, never did he ever abuse me. And when I did something wrong, he never asked me, why did you do this? And when I did not do what he had asked me or ordered me to do, he would never say, why did not you do it. No questioning, no interrogation, no harshness, no strictness, forgiveness, tolerance, forbearance, love, patience, kindness, mercy, gentleness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remember all this, help us learn all this, help us believe all this, help us accept all this and help us adopt all this. And then I would be winding up by the last words of Wama uh, Malakat Aimanukum by some scholars they also refer these to as the domestic animals which we have. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has educated and taught us to be gentle and kind to the animals as well. Allah is merciful. Allah Himself says, Rahmati walib ala ghazabi ila yawmil qiyamah. My mercy will be dominant over my wrath till the day of resurrection. Mercy is an attribute of Allah Himself. He is all merciful. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was what? Rahmatullil Alameen. Allah has said, Wama arsalnaka illa rahmatullil Alameen. We have not but sent you as a mercy for the whole worlds. So Allah likes his bondsmen to be merciful as well. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they both report that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the creatures are the family of Allah. That's the mode most beloved of Allah in the whole of the creation is he who does good to the members of his family, that is his creatures. So it is not being just kind and merciful and generous and caring and loving to the human beings only, but to all living creatures of the world. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has narrated so many words and has actually demonstrated so many role models of behavior, his kind behavior with the animals himself. Hazrat Suhail bin Hamza radiallahu ta'ala Suhail bin Hanzalia radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Dawood that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh people, fear Allah with regard to the dumb animals, that is who cannot talk and express what they need. Do not starve them, ride on them in a condition that they are well, that is they are properly fed. And when you leave them, leave them in a condition that they are well. That is, they are properly looked after, they are fed, they have been given water, shade, everything. Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Musnad Ahmad, that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saw a donkey whose face had been branded, that is stamped with mortal metal, whose face has been had been branded. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa remarked, he is removed from the mercy of Allah who has committed this cruel act. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates a story by the Prophet sallallahu in Bukhari and Muslim and the Prophet sallallahu said that there was a woman of bad character. She was granted remission of all her sins on the act that she saw a dog that was moving around a well. And uh, in such a state that his tongue was hanging out and it was panting and it was appearing as if he was dying of thirst. This woman took pity on the dog and there was no rope, there was no vessel 
to draw the water out from the well. So she took off her leather stocking and tied it to her and drew the water from the well by means of it and gave it to the dog to drink. Prophet Salaam said she was forgiven by Allah of all her sins upon this act of mercy. A companion asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is there a reward even of giving food and drink to the animals? Prophet Salaam said, of course, there is a reward on giving food and drink to every living creature. And that is why it is reported by Hazrat Anas Raziyallahu ta'ala and who in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu said, a Muslim bondsman who plants a tree or grows a crop and then a man, a bird or an animal eats of it, it will be a charity on his part. Hazrat Ibn Umar Raziyallahu ta'ala and who and Hazrat Abu Huraira Raziyallahu ta'ala and who they both report in both Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu narrates the story about a hard-hearted woman. She was a cruel, hard-hearted woman and Prophet ﷺ said that she will make her way to hell simply because she killed a cat. She killed a cat in her careless, callous manner. She held the cat in captivity and neither did she give her anything to eat herself and nor did she free, nor did she free her that she could feed herself. Or, but she was because she killed this cat in a very careless and a cruel manner she would be made to enter hell allahumma ajirna min an-nar hazrat jarir bin abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah will not show mercy to them who do not show mercy to others and similarly hazrat abdullah ibn amr Ibn Allah's Rasulullah Ta'ala reports in Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi that the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will have mercy upon them who are merciful. They treat kindly the dwellers of the earth. He who dwells in heavens will treat him kindly. And then a similar story of a dog is narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu said that there was a traveler. He felt thirsty and he came upon a well and he went down the well. He drank water and he came out and when he came out he saw a dog. The dog seemed as if it was going to die of thirst. The tongue was sticking out and it was licking the wet earth and the man took pity on the dog and all the way again he went down the well and he filled his leather stocking with water and held him held the stocking by his teeth and then came out of the well and he gave the water to the dog and he saved the dog and prophet sallallahu said this simple service to the thirsty dog pleased the lord so much that he blessed the man with salvation the companions asked, is there a reward even on removing the distress of the animals? Yes, replied the prophet, on removing the distress of every living thing that can feel the pangs of hunger and thirst. So this is Islam. And these are the teachings of the Prophet wasallam in perfection of mercy and kindness. Similarly, there is a hadith an incident reported by Hazrat Abdullah bin Jafar Raziullah Ta'ala and who in Abu Dawood that uh, the Prophet وسلم, went to the orchard of an Ansar companion and there he saw a, a camel which was groaning very pathetically and Prophet وسلم, and was groaning and in fact it was shedding tears as well. The Prophet وسلم, went to it and he started stroking the head of the camel very gently and then the camel became quiet. And then he asked, whose camel it is? The person who was the Ansari, he came up and he said, it is, it's my camel. Prophet Sallallahu said to him, do not fear Allah. Do you not fear Allah in respect of this poor dumb creature who has made you his master? It is complained to me that you keep it hungry and you take too much of work from it. So be kind to it and be merciful to it. Similarly, there's a very interesting incident. Hazrat Abdullah, Abdul Rahman bin Abdullah, he uh, narrates in Abu Dawud that we were accompanying the Prophet Sallallahu in a journey and uh, we saw a, a nest. A beautiful red bird had a nest and there were two small nestling and the chicks in the nest and we caught the chicks. 
and uh, when we came and sat with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that bird the mother the bird was uh, they came there and the bird began to hover over our heads and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he noticed the bird he asked what is the matter and we told him that we've taken the nestlings out of the nest prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so annoyed that he immediately said that can't you see how upset the bird is immediately go and put back the birds immediately go back and put back the nestlings and the chicks in the nest similarly there was another incident that the companion said that we were uh, traveling and we stopped over and we saw an ant hill and we set fire to it and uh, when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw the fire he inquired who had put on this fire and why was it uh, put on and uh, the companion said that we burnt it because we wanted to burn the ant hill prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to inflict punishment of fire on living beings is only the right of the creator of the fire so being kind hearted being merciful doing ihsan to parents to relations of kin to the orphans to the deprived to the poor to the neighbors to to the companions of our side to our slaves to our to our servants and even to the living creatures and to the animals is what Allah teaches us in Quran and what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructs us in hadith and sunnah Allah we seek forgiveness for all what we wronged Allah we repent for all what evil deeds we performed Allah forgive our major sins and Allah forgive our minor sins. Rabbi ighfir wa arham wa anta khairur rahimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minaz zalimin. Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfir li. Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfir li. Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfir li. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilayk Allahumma aghfir lana wa lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa ahtana wa afina wa arzuqna Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin sumani Alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah we have in detail discussed the verse number 36 of surah an-nisa today but the last few words the last few words of and the last message of the verse remains to be discussed inshallah we'll be talking about it tomorrow inna allah la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura and we'll be talking about arrogance and being proud and we'll be talking about miserliness and inshallah we'll be talking about about showing off and about uh, boasting and flaunting and then we'll be talking about how our deeds will be recorded inshallah i again would request all of you to invite your friends and your uh, relations and your neighbors to listen to the classes and also if any one of you is interested to uh, let us have your whatsapp numbers then i would request you to inbox the whatsapp number so that they can be added in the whatsapp groups and uh, you can um, listen to them according to your convenience and you can also share them in your own groups in all these requests i i just make because i want you to help me spread the teachings of the quran and i want that all of you join our hands and all of us we join our hands in spreading the message of allah to the allah's people and 
make them all a sadaqai jariya for all of us. Fi imanullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.